From California State University, San Bernardino, it's Local Matters. A local history day and international students. Hello, I'm Maya Preciado and welcome to Local Matters, featuring stories from across the Inland Empire. And I'm Anthony Conley. Cucamonga history comes alive at the John Raines House. Ashley Voss takes us for a trip to the past. At the John Raines House and Museum, people were able to experience an old-fashioned day. This is where people get a chance to come and live like life was 100 or 150 years ago here in California. Of course, most of the things they had to do by hand, so they made toys and the kids are getting a chance to make corn husk dolls and whirly gigs as well as playing some of the other toys we have here. But of course there were a lot of chores as well, so they're going to beat rugs and wash clothes by hand and use some of the tools, make some butter, dip candles, even some stitchery they'll get a chance to do. The Education Division of the San Bernardino County Museum is what puts on this event. And then all the volunteers that you see around, all the kid volunteers, are from our Museum Youth Club. And they are the ones that have learned how to do these activities and how to talk and encourage people to participate with them. Yeah, we originally called this day Adobe Brick Day, but since not a lot of people like Adobe Bricks, we changed the name to History Day. We have done this three years now here at the John Raines House and we also do it at the other historic sites of the museum, the Yorba and Slaughter family adobes, which is in Chino, and the Asistencia, which is in Redlands, and then the uh, Yucaipa adobe in Yucaipa. So be sure to check out more events for the John Raines House and Museum. For Local Matters, I'm Ashley Voss. International students face a mountain of paperwork. Jonathan Oyagoke explains. If you ever wanted to study abroad in another country, here's some information you would need to know. Well, first they, wanted, they would like to know, it would be great if they knew which country they wanted to go to. They would have to look at the specific country brochure and see which, if they meet the eligibility requirements, which would be like a minimum requirement. For some countries it's a 2.75 GPA, for other countries it's a 3.0 GPA, and then if they're upper division and if there's a language requirement for certain countries, um, they would have to find all of that out. Well, you'll definitely need a passport. Um, the, if you are accepted into the program, um, the international programs works it out for everybody so that um, the visa process uh, is smooth and easy. So the student really doesn't have to worry too much about the visa process. I studied abroad actually with the international programs here at Cal State San Bernardino to Germany. I went to Tübingen, Germany, um, University of Tübingen, and um, the hardships that I experienced was just not really knowing the German language because they do speak German. They all know English. Most of them do know English. However, still at the same time, I needed to find out where to go to get some bread or where can I just go to a regular supermarket. There may be some hardships with studying abroad, but the experience can be an opportunity of a lifetime. For Local Matters, I'm Jonathan Oyegoke. Well, that's all we have for now. I'm Myra Preciado. And I'm Anthony Conley. Join us next time for more local stories that matter. University are its faculty and staff, and ours excel. In our College of Arts and Letters, we launched an Asian Studies minor, thanks to a large grant from the U.S. Department of Education. And our Arabic Language and Culture program, offered by the Department of World Languages and Literatures, received $400,000 in Federal Strategic Language Initiative funding.